Good morning and welcome to Washington National Cathedral on this Friday morning. My name is Randy Hollerith. I'm the Dean of the Cathedral and I'm so glad that you're joining us for this brief service of morning prayer. Let us begin. I will rise and go to my Father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness, because we have rebelled against him and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord, our God, by following his laws, which he set before us. Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Let us pray. Gracious God, help me today to realize that you will be speaking to me through the events of the day, through people, through things, and through creation. Give me ears and eyes and heart to perceive you, however veiled your presence may be. Give me insight to see through the exterior of things into the interior truth. Give me your spirit of discernment, O Lord, you know how busy I must be this day. If I forget you, do not forget me. Amen. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our lesson for this Friday morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 37 to 42. Jesus said, if I am not doing the works of my Father, then do not believe me. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works, so that you may know and understand that the Father is in me, and I am in the Father. Then they tried to arrest him again, but he escaped from their hands. He went away again across the Jordan to the place where John had been baptizing earlier, and he remained there. Many came to him, and they were saying, John performed no sign, but everything that John said about this man was true, and many believed in him there. In our lesson for today, the authorities want to arrest Jesus because they are afraid of Jesus. He performs miraculous signs, he heals people, he attracts large crowds, he says things that seem to be heretical. They are afraid because they think Jesus is a threat. And it is this fear that will lead them to arrest him, to beat him, and to nail him on the cross. From my point of view, fear is the trickiest of all emotions. It is absolutely essential in some ways. We couldn't survive without it. At the same time, it's the most dangerous and destructive emotion. Fear is what keeps us from getting too close to the edge of a cliff, or it's what makes us pay attention when walking alone late at night in an unfamiliar location. It is what keeps us from putting our fingers into a fire or trying to get to pet a snarling dog. Fear helps us to survive. It is an ancient primitive emotion with great evolutionary importance. And yet, at the same time, it is an emotion that can be incredibly destructive and malignant when not controlled by reason or tempered by compassion. 
Throughout history, how often has fear of the unknown or fear of the stranger led to terrible acts of hatred and violence? Fear is what killed Jesus, and fear is what Jesus came to allay, specifically the fear of death. It is no accident that some variation of do not be afraid is found more than 300 times in the Bible. Fear is a big deal for human beings. What is it that you're afraid of? Do you have fears that plague you, that stick with you, perhaps even irrational fears that just hamper your life? I've seen the fear of failure completely incapacitate immensely gifted people and preventing them from ever reaching their potential. I've seen the fear of change cause people to lock down their lives in ways that lead to um, stagnation and even depression. I've seen the fear of death cause middle-aged men to do the dumbest things that lead to blown marriages and devastated families. I've seen the fear of loss cause people to hoard everything from money to empty beer cans. I have a constant fear for my children. Perhaps it's a the price of parenthood, I guess, but no matter how old they get, I'm always afraid for their safety and their well-being. This fear sometimes, which is quite irrational, has led me on more than one occasion to call and text them repeatedly late at night until they respond and assure me that they are just fine. Friends, how we handle our fears make a great difference. On a global scale, if we could learn to handle fear better, this world would be a much more peaceful, much less violent place. On a personal level, how we handle fear can have a great effect on our emotional and spiritual well-being. Late at night when the worries, the fears creep up on me and swirl around my pillow, I try to give them to God, to give them to my brother Jesus, who tells me fear not. I do this by literally imagining myself taking each one of my fears, each one of my worries, and placing it in a basket. Then I imagine myself picking up this basket and carrying it up a long, steep hill. At the top of that hill is the cross, the cross on which Jesus died to save me from fear. I kneel down at the foot of that cross, and I take my basket, and I unload each of those worries, each of those fears there at the foot of the cross. Then I pray, Lord, I give you these things. They're too big to me, too big for me to carry right now. I give them to you, and I ask for your loving protection. Take them from me now and let me rest, let me sleep. I know I can pick them up again tomorrow. And then I often end with the 23rd Psalm. So, will you join me in this wonderful Psalm, the 23rd Psalm? Will you join me in fighting the fear? If you know it, join with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. 
Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Now would you join with me as we pray together the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord, keep this nation under thy care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth and your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Create in me, gracious Lord, a spirit that is patient and kind. Keep me from all envy or boasting, arrogance or rudeness. Give me true wisdom and understanding that I may always rejoice in the truth and never in wrongdoing. Strengthen my trust in you so that I can bear all things, believe all things, hope all things, and endure all things. Through your strong leading and my own feeble effort, let me mature and grow from the childish to the adult. You, Lord Jesus, our love, make me to be more like you. Grant that your love may be my word and my wisdom, my great offering and my one accomplishment. For of all things, love is the greatest, and it never comes to an end. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen.